There are 24 central committees, one for every single county, the local central committees. Um, they elect the chair. And we also, we have two vice chairs, not three. So that's one of the differences. I am from Baltimore County's Central Committee. I am, as of today, the second vice chair. With any luck, tomorrow night, I will be elected the first vice chair as we have a uh, board election tomorrow night. Um, we are elected during the primary, during the legislative uh, election year. So we serve two, four, we serve four year terms. So we were elected in 2006, we'll be next elected in 2010. We then elect our chair. The chair uh, are recommended when there is a, which of course there mostly is, a Democratic governor. Um, the chair is recommended to the central committee um, by the governor when there isn't, as there was just a couple years ago. Um, then the the, there's an ad hoc sort of advisory board, which is made up of all the top elected officials in the state. They suggest, they make suggestions. So the central committee members, we are elected by legislative district. So again, I'm from the 42nd district. There are five of us. No one knows what the central committee does. I mean, no one really, I guess I should tell you what we do. But, um, you know, but and the general public, they get down to that part and either they skip it entirely or they go, you know, by the alphabet or they go every mail or everything, I mean, you know, or they go reverse order in the alphabet. Most people just don't know what their central committee members do. And that is one of the things we need to change. So what do we do? Um, we are the official uh, Democratic Party. For the county. We organize for the elections, like we're doing um, now for this coming election. We make some decisions in terms of um, if, if uh, say for instance, a legislator died in office or had to resign or whatever, and this is our main constitutional duty primarily, is we select the person who will replace that. And it will be up to first the members of the 42nd district to decide on his replacement. And then that goes to the central committee as a whole, who then, you know, uh, uh, approves the replacement, if you will. We have a number of unity events throughout the year. Um, basically, we try to be the presence of the party. But we also do a lot of organizational things, and, and we're getting better and better at that. Up until the election of Bob Ehrlich, um, the party was very complacent. I think that's kind of a given. Pretty much everyone knows that. Uh, the party was pretty complacent at the top level as well as at the local level. We've been electing Democratic governors forever, it seemed, um, you know, with a, a few blips about 20 or 30 years ago. and. Um, you know, no one thought it was going to be any different, particularly given the balance of uh, voters in Maryland and in Baltimore County, which in both places is heavily Democratic. Uh, but that was a wake-up wake up call to the Democratic Party. And we began working harder here at the local level as well as at the state level uh, in terms of reorganizing and rethinking how we were going to work as a party and what we were going to do and getting back to the grassroots. Getting those clubs together, because they're really the grassroots. They're the people who are going to be out on election day, staffing the polls. You know, they're the people who kind of keep the party going in between elections with their meetings and their organization. This is what's different this year than it's ever been before. Um, Rather than concentrating on Maryland, the board, what we call the coordinated campaign, which is by coordinated, it's supposed to be the uh, presidential along with the congressional. All the effort has been out of state. All of our congressmen have very safe seats, um, the ones who are incumbents. So they have been putting all of their efforts into the election of Barack Obama. 
Up until uh, Halloween, all the phone banking for the last couple of months up till that point is going to be um, to persuade people to vote. So right now we're doing the persuasion work um, during the phone bank. After Halloween, they will take all the calls as they do the persuasion votes. They rank them one to five, one's being strong for Obama, five's being strong for McCain. From Halloween to election day, they will call their ones and they will call their twos and they will make sure that those people are planning to get out to vote. Then the last four days before election, they will not only be calling Pennsylvania, they'll begin calling other states as well. This year, the momentum has really been from the grassroots. The Barack Obama campaign prior to, while he was still running in the primaries, had all been grassroots efforts for the most part. There were a number of, and there still are, a number of, of local groups, Obama for America groups, uh, Maryland for Obama, Baltimore County for Obama, Baltimore City for Obama. These were locally created groups. And then once he was, got through the convention and was the official candidate, the campaign plugged into all those local groups. And they also decided, you know, their efforts were really going to go into those swing states. States like Maryland um, were just going to kind of have to, in a certain sense, fend for themselves locally. But, but the surge of volunteers, they used that surge to help swing votes in other states. People were really um, fired up in the Kerry election because they wanted to get rid of George Bush. But uh, the firing up in this election is a little bit different. It's, it's um, substantially different. It's, it's more about, um, then it was all about getting rid of George Bush. This time it's all about electing Barack Obama. And uh, you know, there's a, there's a real difference in that. What are we doing locally? We are working on making sure there is a Democratic presence on election day.